What up, everybody? It's your girl, Sherry's Joy. I am representing the DigiCast. I am half of the DigiCast. Almost forgot who I represent. Thank you for listening and welcome to my show. This is another episode of Bookmarked. This is actually part two of episode one of me talking or discussing New Girl in Town, the Olivia Knight Mysteries, book one of 14 by L. Gray and K.S. Gray. So if you haven't listened to episode one, or excuse me, if you haven't listened to, well, yeah, if you haven't listened to two, episode one, part one, <laughs> go back and listen to part one of this episode. Um, you know, I guess technically this is still a pilot episode. I mean, you know, it's a two-parter here and it all goes together, but... Thank you for all of my listeners and thank you for all of my viewers. I truly appreciate it. I've, um, you know, this is, uh, what, a week now for me? So this is actually pretty good. Um, I am working on this podcast as something that I would like to do and why not discuss things that I absolutely love, which is reading. So here we go. Uh, full on spoilers. And if you are interested in reading this book, again, it is New Girl in Town, the Olivia Knight FBI Mysteries, book one of 14, second part. So, geez, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> I, um, the first part was kind of to me all over the place. But that is kind of like how most books are, right? You start a new book and it's like, oh my God, I got to learn all these new characters. And there's like so many and then you get confused. And then, then, then you know, by the time you get halfway through the book, it then comes together. So I think for me, for this book, I was about 25% in and everything got together and I was able to recognize characters by name and face. Well, not face. Well, yeah, face, the face that I gave them anyway, <laughs> based on their, how they were written. So when we first, when we left, um, we were talking about the woods. So just a quick, quick recap. Um, Olivia Knight, she's an FBI agent living, uh, just moved to New Grove, Northern Virginia, and she's in the woods. She bought a cabin in the woods. It was used to be a ranger cabin. And she um, is investigating with her her um, partner, Brock Tanner, another FBI agent, these missing girls. So when we left, she came, her and Brock were walking in the woods and came across this like, I don't know, vagabond looking lady. She just was kind of like weary and everything. And this was after they discovered the tarp in the tree. And she's like, hey, you know, I want to talk to you. Can we talk to you? You're, are you familiar with these woods? Do you know anything about anything that's missing here? <laughs> about these girls that are missing? No, I don't know anything. She's like kind of brushing them off. She doesn't want to talk. She's like, I'm even like, you know, whatever. You're not going to find anything here. I'm just passing through or some crap like that. And it's like, okay, whatever, fine. So then Olivia and Brock, they drive back to Sophia's house to see if they can get more information from her parents or just to kind of see what's going on. So when they get there, they see that Craig, Sophia's boyfriend, has broken into the house and they catch him as they are pulling up or, you know, as they're sitting there watching, they catch him like breaking out if you will of the house and they're like what is going on so they roll up on him and they're like you know police freeze you've been caught what's going on here and uh, you know if what we can remember of craig is that from part one he's like 19 he's sophia's not really boyfriend but he cares about her um sophia's 15 so you know and he doesn't say that they're boyfriend girlfriend he just really cares about her and when sophia gets old enough basically legal then they can be together so he's just kind of waiting for that um so it's like okay well dude what are you doing breaking into this house and breaking out of this house what is it 
that you're looking for? What is it that you're hiding? He's like, I can't say, I can't say. So Olivia gets like really disappointed and upset because she was really rooting for Craig. She was like, I don't think Craig had anything to do with it. I think he's on the up and up. He's too dumb, basically too dumb and young to really get away with kidnapping multiple people. At this point, it's like two, possibly three missing girls. And he, and then she's, you know, so now he's like, breaking in and out of Sophia's house. And I was like, yo, come on. What are you doing? I was rooting for you. You're doing this stupid thing. How stupid am I? Cause I'm, well, how naive am I? Because I really thought that you were innocent and now you're pulling this crap and you look very guilty. Oh my God, I can't believe this. So Brock is like on the opposite side. I was like, hey, calm down. You never know. Let's figure this out. Um, you know, and then they're still trying to talk to him. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Maggie, the police, the local police comes and Maggie's trying to talk to him and it's just a whole bunch of mess. So they arrest him, take him back to the police station and Maggie is like, you know, trying to talk to him rationally. Like, I know you, I know because, you know, local police, small town. I know you, I know your personality. I, you know, you've got one chance to tell me what's going on, you know, and they're like really trying to talk to him to figure everything out. And he's like, I can't say, I can't say, I can't say. And then finally, eventually he does give in and he's like, <laughs> he's like, he tells on himself. He's like, well, I went in there cause I gave Sophia two joints. And so I went in there to see if I could find them before you guys searched and got caught, you know, and I got caught and the room goes silent and they're just like, are you serious? You broke into the house to get two joints. And then they're like, well, what the hell makes you think that we would, you know, trace these joints back to you, you dumbass. You just told on yourself. <laughs> and then, you know, they're all, they're like, well, in Virginia, in the state of Virginia, I don't know how true, how accurate this is now. Um, this book was written a few years ago, but you know, in the state of Virginia, it is illegal to give marijuana to a minor. That'll get you the, a minimum two years in prison. Okay. So side note, I mean, I, I get it, you know, you're giving weed to a minor, but two years in prison for just weed. I mean, I'm not, I don't smoke, I don't, you know, drink or do drugs or anything like that, but I just think that's kind of like major, but then, you know, I get it sort of, it's a minor, but then I'm also like, well, how minor are they? <laughs> So I don't know, whatever. I can't get into all of that, but because I don't, you know, politics and legal system and all that mess. I just, I'm just reading the book. So I thought that was a little extreme. Um, so, you know, so eventually they're like, Maggie's like, I got to arrest you. And Olivia is back to, oh man, it really isn't him. So I doubted him for a minute and then I made myself feel really, really terrible and I shouldn't have. So Olivia is like, down in the dumps about all of that and like, ugh, you know, I can't believe all this is happening. And at some point her and Brock go to the diner, the local diner. And because Brock is hungry and he needs, you know, he's, he calls his food, like food for thought, I guess, like energy. And he needs to get some food so he can think clearly. So he orders like this triple burger and fries and a milkshake. And Olivia just orders some coffee and mozzarella sticks. Okay. Um, so they're eating and they're talking and then Olivia is just kind of like, Ugh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't know. She's just kind of like emotional. She's like, I can't believe this. And I feel like this is a dead end and all this is happening. And then she starts talking about like her sister. And then we find out, you know, she confesses that her mother actually went missing and she's taking all of this to heart and she is so determined to get all of this taken care of, you know, get this case solved and find these girls. But she's like really taking this to heart at this point because they feel like they're at a dead end. So then, um, they go back to, well, Olivia goes to the forensics because they let her know that the results of the stuff in the tree tarp 
is you know up so remember in the tree t in inside of the tree the hollow of the tree in the forest they found a tarp and in that tarp was like this rag doll a lock of blonde hair and some baby teeth <laughs> um so they sent that to forensics and the forensics lady is is so funny because she describes her i can like see her perfectly she's like the scrawny skinny lady and I mean, that's how she's described. And she's got like bony face and her hair is pulled back in a ponytail, like so tight that she looks like she had Botox and that her hairline is like all the way pulled back because her, her ponytail is like so tight. So basically she's like saying, Hey, you know, I ran this stuff. This was a waste of my complete time and you're wasting your time. And I have like actual crimes and actual things that I need to run DNA and all of that. So the hair is, um, you know, definitely female and obviously still blonde and the baby teeth have been confirmed to be from the same person who the hair belongs to and they didn't find anything on the rag doll and they couldn't really say like how old the teeth were um it, it was like oh <coughs> excuse me they couldn't see you know determine how old the hair is but she had to guess that it was in within the last like 15 to 20 years so she's like all right bye olivia you just wasted you know my time i got real shit to do olivia is again down in the dumps feeling like ugh so she um she goes home and she goes to sleep and all that and then the phone rings well actually she goes back and she sees brock and brock is like all right well we're i guess you know they're gonna pull me off of the case so i'm gonna go back to dc that's where he lives and it's not that far <laughs> it's not <laughs> so i'm gonna go back to dc and because i know they're gonna pull me off of the case yada yada blah 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 and olivia's like oh you really have to go and he's like yeah i mean what else is there for me to do here she's like oh but i'm here she basically wants to say that like she's thinking but i'm here i don't want you to go i'm so in love with you oh my god but she doesn't say that she's professional they're partners and she's just like all right, well, I guess I'll never see you again. And he's like, what are you talking about? We're friends. I live an hour away. It's DC, whatever. I'll see you again. And she's like, okay, fine. So they leave. She goes upstairs. She goes to bed and all that. Phone rings. It's her boss. And the boss is like, hey, we got another missing girl. Oh my goodness. So this missing girl, her name is Haley. And she is missing girl number four, I believe. Yes, missing girl number four. She was taken at a sleepover. So she had a sleepover and she had a bunch of, you know, her friends over and the parents were like, oh my God, I like the girls told they it was 2 a.m. And the girls said that, you know, or 4 a.m. when they woke up and they came up and they got me and she was like missing. So you're like, well, how did she go missing? Like, this is a sleepover. I'm thinking when you have a sleepover, like all your friends, they sleep like, I don't know, in the same room together, the basement, living room, whatever you're, you know, all of that. But this is like a 2011 sleepover. So, you know, I had sleepovers in the eighties, whatever. So anyway, so she's missing and it's like, all right, back to work. So Olivia goes back to where Brock's B and B was. And he's like, Hey, let's do this. We're going to get this killer, not killer kidnapper. And they're all about it. So they're talking and they're like, you know, the forensics with the doll and the missing teeth, I feel like it, oh, not me, but them, they feel like the kidnapper, and I'm sitting here thinking the kidnapper is a female. It's totally female. Remember in the, in the epilogue, the person was like, here, eat your mac and cheese just the way you like it. And I made your toast just the way you like it. I feel like that's more of a female thing, like a nurturer type of person, like a mom. Because I don't think a dad is really going to go that extreme and really care that much about how perfect the mac and cheese is and how perfect the toast is for you know, this person that they, this kid that they kidnapped, okay, 15 year old, I'm sorry, this teenager that they kidnapped. So I'm thinking it's female. I'm like, this is a female. So what these two come up with, Brock and Olivia, they're like, all right, this guy, they keep calling it the kidnapper a guy. And I'm like screaming, like it could be female. So this guy kidnapped, the kidnapper obviously lost a child and, um, you know, is very, uh, like look at, um, 
type specific in what they're looking for. All the kidna all the kid are teenagers that have been teenage napped are all blonde, they're petite, and they're all the same age, 15 years old. So then they, you know, along with the baby teeth and the rag doll and the hair, they feel like maybe that's all connected. And a person who has all of those keepsakes obviously possibly have lost a child at some point, you know, child died. They, they go straight to death <laughs> and they're like, you know, and so they are trying to make up for the child that they lost. And I'm like, I don't feel like a male dad is going to be that sentimental. Like who keeps baby teeth like that? And, and I mean, you know, maybe one, but like all of them. And then to like put it in a tarp and put it in the woods. Like why? Why? That's just so creepy on some other level weird. So whatever. So that's what they think. They think this guy kidnapped these, these, these teenagers and they're looking for them. Um, so they go to Haley's house to talk to her, Haley's parents. And when they get there, Susan, the weird lady in the woods is like throwing a fit and the, and Maggie's there, the police are there. And she's like, you know, just talking like they threw the, so a brick got thrown through her window and she's like, they threw a brick through my window. I'm not safe. This neighborhood is not safe. I'm going to get kidnapped next. I guess I'm going to get adult nap next. And she's just like, I, I mean, is that why we call it tangent? Is that why we call it now taken? Because kidnapped just kind of sounds like a kid got napped, you know, like, I don't know, 80s type phrase. And then you've never heard anyone say teenage napped. I mean, I just did, but I don't think that's a thing. And so now a thing is called taken because it could be anyone gets taken, right? We've learned that word. This is 2024. People get taken all the time, all ages. It's sick and it's sad, but it happens. So taken. So she's like, I'm, but she literally says in this book, I'm going to get kidnapped and you know, this is not safe neighborhood. I'm going to go with my parents or I'm going to go away from here. Oh my God. So Olivia and Brock are like, all right, we need to talk to this lady because like she's the next door neighbor. She's got a brick thrown through her window. Maybe she knows something. So they're talking to her and the more that they talk to her, Tan um, Tanner, uh, Agent Tanner, Brock, he is like, she's a drunk. <laughs> she is definitely an alcoholic. And this is why she's all over the place. She is um, blotched in the face. She's got fair skin. She's got like some gray blotches. She has red nose, her eyes, her, she's kind of slurring her words and she's just crazy talking. And so he's like, she's an alcoholic. We don't know if, you know, we can trust what she's saying. And so Olivia's like, well, I don't know. She might be on to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so they, they don't rule her out as like not talking to they talk there, they continue talking to her and they continue asking her questions. And she's like, well, um, Haley's parents, they have a housekeeper and the housekeeper go cause, because this kidnap, there was no forced entry. So whoever did this had a key. So S Susan is like talking about the housekeeper and how the housekeeper, the only person that goes in and out is the housekeeper and the neighbors on the other side of Haley and them are nosy and not trustworthy so she's like trying to pin it on the other neighbors the you know of throwing the brick in her window or you know just a bunch of like crazy neighborhood stuff so olivia and brock are like Ugh, whatever like i'm done with this like we got nothing here we're not going to find out anything here so they go to the next town over I mean, this is kidnapped, uh, excuse me, this is taken teenager number four. And now they go over <laughs> to the next town to talk to the police there. So they go and they talk to the police. It was like one guy in the police station. And trust me, I'm not criticizing this book at all. It was a very interesting read. I really did enjoy it. Um, and so the police officer is like, you're those agents, aren't you working on that kidnapping case? And they're like, yeah, I don't have anything except, you know, nobody, nobody's going out at night. My whole town is scared, got nothing here and, you know, another dead end. So it's like, oh my goodness, what is going on? So they're like feeling beaten, destroyed all over again. And then they get a call. 
there is another girl taken. So this time, this is in Alexandria. And if anybody knows anything about, like, the DMV area, you know, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, you, or anything about Virginia, yeah, I mean, D.C., Maryland, Virginia. So, you know, this, the place, the town, Bell Grove, Virginia, Northern Virginia, I've never heard of it. Although when I looked it up, it said that Bell Grove, Virginia is a plantation. Oof. So, um... Bell Grove, Virginia is a town in this book. And then there's a, another person taken from Alexandria, Virginia. And it's like, okay, so why so far away? So they go to the location of this, of the girl. And it's like this rundown neighborhood. Now this is the part of the book that I really did not like. Um, they go to this rundown neighborhood and they find the house that they need. Grass is like unkempt or unkept and you know overgrown and the house is just kind of like they make she the writer make they make it to seem like it's a shack like or like a like a cheaper like you know I don't know I when I read it I mean everybody's perspective is different but when I read it I I get the idea of like a little old rundown shack looking house on a street where it was like definitely unkept and like they said, trash was everywhere, dirty. So I'm like, run down neighborhood, okay. They knock on the door and they go inside. And <sighs> this is what I don't like. The parents are black. And Olivia and Brock look at each other and they're like, okay, silently. And they go in and they're talking to the parents and they kept saying, you know, kid. And they're like, what are you talking about, kid? Tasha is 18 years old. Oh, okay. So then they get more, you know, they continue talking, but they're like, but Olivia, you know, inside the book, Olivia's like, okay, well, this is a waste of time, but we're going to still talk anyway because we don't want to be disrespectful. So they're getting the information and they're like, all right, thanks, bye. And then we never hear about that missing 18 year old named Tasha ever again. And that's the part that upset me. I mean, I know it's a book and that's not the whole point of the book. And I might be getting just a little bit deep, but you know, as being a person of color myself and knowing that there are so many people of color out there that are missing and nobody cares except for like the families and other people of color, like the, the like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into that. But that I was like, ugh, we're bringing this into the book. Like, let's just read about. And like I said, I could be reading too much more into it, you know, than what needs to be. But it was written in the book that was in there. And that pissed me off a little bit. Like, I'm like, because it's never mentioned again. You know, it's like another black girl missing and nobody cares. <laughs> so it's like, also in a book that I'm reading. And I thought that was crazy. So anyway, um, I'm sorry, but that's, you know, I'm not sorry. So that's, it is what it is. So they, you know, they're like another dead end. Oh my goodness. So they go back to the diner and they eat and they have coffee or, and then they go back to, um, Olivia's place and what's waiting for her, a freaking town mob <laughs> is waiting. Basically it is the parents of all the missing girls have barged and, it, it, you know, they're waiting for Olivia to get home. So Olivia and Brock are like, oh, my goodness, like, this is my home. You know, Olivia is this is my house. This is my home. And Sophia, her mother, Alice, remember, I don't like her. She's the asshole parent, barges in and is like, what have you been doing? What have you two been doing other than cuddling up and, you know, making whatever with each other we know that you've been in the diner making googly eyes instead of working on finding our kids and you know just demanding information like first of all you bust into my house no first of all you come to my home how dare you and olivia's like how did you know where i live and they're like you're the only fbi agent in town it's a small town we know where you live <laughs> you live in a cabin in the woods what other cabin in the woods is there okay fine so and then how dare you bust up in my home and you demand to know what's going on? I mean, and then you accuse me and my partner of like, I don't know, having an affair versus finding your missing kids. So they basically tell, actually Brock 
more so tells Alice off. And Alice's husband is Elijah. He's trying to, like, he's very embarrassed by his wife, obviously, and her behavior. And he's trying to calm her down. And after Brock and Olivia basically tell the bitch to f*** off and shut up and listen, and here's what we have, by the end of all of that, and they show her the evidence and everything that they've gone through and how many dead ends they've come to, Alice kind of calms down. She backs off and she's like, I'm sorry, you're right, you know, I'm embarrassed, all this other crap. So they make it right. And they talk and they go over all the information and they tell her, you know, the theory the whole time. I'm like, it's a female because they're still saying male. I'm like, it's a female. It's a female. Oh, my goodness. And I'm like, why hasn't anybody questioned this housekeeper? What is going on? So after all of that happens, it's nighttime. Brock goes home. The townspeople leave. Olivia, again, as the book started, she goes, starts to go upstairs um, to go to bed. She's in bed. She hears stuff outside. She hears footsteps. So she grabs her gun. She goes to check it out. And who does she come across on her porch? Sophia and Haley. They show up. Dirty, tired, wild-eyed, fatigued, if I didn't say that, and barefoot. And just, they look... Um, tortured like how like how uh the first girl looked amelia and they're just like oh my god you know she's like we found you so she brings them in she immediately instead of calling 911 she like immediately calls their parents like i've got them here she calls sophia's parents first because alice was so you know, crazy with her thing. She thought that it would be best. And Sophia was missing before Haley. She thought it would be best to call Sophia's parent first. I'm like, I think it would be best to call 911 first, but okay. So she calls the parents, parents come, you know, the cops come, everybody comes, they talk to them, trying to figure out what's going on. This is when we find out kidnapper is a female. I said it. Um, And the kids are like, because she was like, this guy, this guy, this guy, what are you talking about, guy? It was a female. She made us dance, and she did us this, and she made us call her mom. See? Mom. That whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. So she made us do this, and they kept, the mom kept calling me Lauren. 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 They kept calling both of them Lauren. And it's like, bingo! We got a name. We got Lauren. So they are like, all right, find all the missing people well, actually, I think before that, they were like, find, you know, she goes to Maggie and is like, can you find me all the people in the town who have missing, who have lost a, a child? All dead ends. So that, that was the other dead end. Sorry. So yeah, so Lauren. Okay, so now they're looking for someone named Lauren or someone who lost a child named Lauren. Cool. So... The next day, they get a, Olivia gets a call. We got another missing girl. Her name is ding, 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 Lauren. And she's in Baltimore. <laughs> what? So we have a missing, a missing girl in Seattle. She was found. That's Amelia. That's girl one. Then we got the two missing girls from New Grove, the, the Bell Grove, the town, um, Sophia and Haley. Then we have the missing, the missing woman 18 year old and alexandria tasha now we have a missing person named lauren in baltimore all right so let's do it so we go to baltimore to talk to you know to find out what's going on and i, I mean i'm just gonna end it here the or just call it a show a book here um, they're like, all right, well, can they talk to the girls and like, can you explain what the place looked like where you being held? It was a shack in the middle of the woods is basically what they say. So Olivia and Brock get like a map, a satellite map of the woods and they find a shack all the way, like far into the woods. And she texts it, she texts this picture to the girls like, is this where you were? Okay. These girls who were just traumatized 
the very next day sends them a text message and picture. Sure, this is how we get in touch with our teenagers these days. I've got two of them. Um, and that's really how you're going to get a hold of them through text. But I'm like, I, I can you just drive over there? So anyway, yes, this is the shack. So Brock and Olivia go through the woods. And they walk, like, for two hours, and they come close to the shack. Olivia tells Brock, look, I need to do this myself. It's a female. She's going to want to identify with another female. You wait here. Are you sure? Yes. So she continues, and she goes, and she goes in. She sees all these pictures on the wall. This rundown place basically has no floor. She sees all these pictures on the wall, and it's, like, of all these girls, like, you know, at least she it, – she, the makes it seem like there's at least 25 to 50 maybe more girls all in the same type of dress you know pictures they all look the same 15 year old looking blonde hair caucasian just on the wall and it's like wow so she hears you know the talking she goes in and she sees obviously lauren she's all tied up lauren is an adult and her mother susan is the kidnapper so Susan is an alcoholic and her and her husband, they lived in Seattle and they got divorced because of her alcoholism and, you know, just how she was. And they took, and, and I guess the dad got custody of Lauren that upset Susan. You know, she lost her child that way, not through death. And Amelia, well, what does this have to do with Amelia? Amelia and her family moved into the house that they lived in Seattle and crazy ass Susan was watching this family for years and you know and it was for years and then she I guess when she was the right age she decided to kidnap you know I'm sorry take her and bring her all the way back to Virginia and let her go because the girls Sophia and Haley were like well when it got to a certain point she was like oh this won't do this you guys aren't good enough you're not you won't make the standards or whatever you're not good enough you're not her and just lets them go um and it could have been hundreds of girls we don't know we only know about the girls in the book um so that's it folks <laughs> Susan is the kidnapper the alcoholic of the town is the kidnapper and that is the book we never find out anything else about craig and olivia and brock they say their goodbyes you know they're like case is over he's going home she's feeling some kind of way they almost kiss again doesn't happen he walks you know he's like i promised you a beer when this was done you and maggie so they go have beer and that's kind of the end of the chapter then the epilogue comes and brock does come back he comes back to live he misses the small town living don't blame him i love small towns um so they never hook up they never get together we don't craig is in jail for the marijuana thing we don't know anything else about him and his situation Tasha is never discussed again in book one, at least. And Amelia, you know, all of that is, all is white, right with the rain. You know, it's like months later, it's like nine months or so later, that's when Brock comes back. And Olivia's, you know, she's she's finally in with the in crowd or <laughs> of the town's people. They like her. She walks everywhere. They talk to her. She's finally, you know, she's a local um, and she sees Haley and Sophia. They're like best friends now. And they walk around together all the time. And that's the book. So thank you for listening. That, again, was New Girl in Town, The Olivia Knight FBI Mysteries, book one of 14 by L. Gray and K.S. Gray. They are independent. I just found out independent uh, writers. So... Thank you for listening to me and hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. I did enjoy this book. Again, this is not a book review. This is just me talking about the book because I don't have anybody else to talk to about the book. So why not do a podcast on it? <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with me. I am Sherry's Joy, uh, the one half of the Digicast. You can actually check us out or please do check us out on YouTube at the Digicast one, the number one. 
um, like and subscribe. We have a blog, the digicast.substack.com. Flipboard. We do have a Flipboard. There isn't much up there yet. There's a lot coming soon. We just set that up, but search for us on Flipboard at the Digicast. Facebook, the Digicast. We're on Instagram, the Digicast. Spotify, the Digicast. And we have Amazon. So please use our affiliate link on Amazon. The description is in the information below. Check out our merchandise and not our merchandise for Digicast, but check out the things that we like that are on Amazon. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you have a suggestion for a book that you'd like me to read, please let me know. I would be more than happy to check it out. I am an avid reader. I love reading. Average reading is about five books a month. Next book review or not review. Sorry, I keep saying review. This is not a book review. This is a book podcast where I'm just talking about the book I'm reading it is going to be 112263 by the great Stephen King. That I am expecting it to probably be a three potter. That is a 1200 page book, you guys. So I am very excited about reading that. I have been waiting to read that and I am finally reading it. Um, I'm looking forward to doing the show. I'm looking forward to hearing your, you know, advice, context, content, whatever you want to call it, comments, concerns. Again, thank you for hanging out with me. I truly appreciate it. Sherry's Joy, half the Digicast, love the world. Bye.